Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Python series. In this video, I'll be teaching you about the match statement. All right guys, welcome back. Like I said, now I'm gonna be teaching you about the match statements, which is also known as the switch case statements. In the last videos, we learned about the if statement and the if nested if statement, so we can nest if statements and allow uh, our code to branch in different directions using if statements, which is really cool and very powerful. And now I'm gonna be teaching you about a different type of statement within Python that does something very, very similar. So with the regular if statement, you're gonna base it upon regular conditions, such as uh, anything that evaluates to true or false, booleans. And if something is true, then it's going to run that branch of code. And yeah, so if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and watch that. So with this one, it's not exactly based on a condition, it's based on a value. So let's just say that we have a number such as brain size, not a number, it can be any value. So brain size is equal to, and you can put a number, you can put a string, whatever you want. I'm gonna do small. So we have a variable called brain size and it's equal to small. And then let's have a match statement. So a match statement works like this, so match, and then after this, you have to do brain size or the variable that you're trying to match the values for, and then colon. And then under that, you put the cases, the different values that you're matching against. So the way that this will work is you have different values, which are known as cases. And if this variable here, if brain size contains any of those values, it'll run the block of code within that case, okay? And by the way, this can only be used with Python 3.10 or above, okay? I had 3.9 in my previous episodes at the time of the recordings, um, but I just had to upgrade to 3.10 so that I can be able to use a match statement, okay? So it's a bit of a newer feature at the time of recording. And so let's say that we want to run some piece of code if the value is small. So we'll say case, and then after this, we put the value that we're going to match it against, so small. And then we're gonna put a colon again, and then indent on a new line. And then with this indentation here, we're gonna put the code that we want to run if this variable has a value of small, all right? So we're just gonna go ahead and print out and say, you have a small brain. And then we can run some more code if we want to, or we can go ahead and add another case by pressing backspace to go onto the same indentation line here. So case, we'll say medium. And if that's the case, then we'll print out, you have a medium brain. And I think you get the point, right? So case, large, print, you have a large brain. Now let's see what happens when we run this, just to verify that everything's working. So right click, run, and there we get, and there we go, we get, you have a small brain, which is printed out because we're matching all of these different cases against the value stored within brain size. And this one happens to have a value that is stored within brain size currently, so it's going to run the code within that case, okay? Pretty simple stuff, very, very similar to an if statement as you can see. The only difference is that it's not based on a condition as you can see, it's based on values, which are known as cases. And here you're just putting the actual variable that you're checking against, okay? So in Python, again, they're called match statements, but usually in other languages, such as Java or C++ or any other very popular language, they're usually referred to as switch statements. So, so it shouldn't really matter as long as you know what you're talking about, right? So let me give you another example. Let's say you have a variable HTTP error. And if you've ever done any web development or you've visited a web page and something wrong happened, you may have gotten an error such as 404. That's probably the most common error that everyone knows about, which means page not found. So we're going to make a match statement that matches against the different common errors in HTTP codes and uh, running some code differently depending on which one it's matched to, okay? So we'll do match HTTP error colon and we'll say case 404. And as you can see here, we're using a number just because we expect this to have a number rather than a string. If you expect it to have a string, then of course you would want to match it against a string. Just do whatever makes sense in that situation. So print page not found, case 403. This is, this is usually uh, for a forbidden page. So we'll say print access denied. This one's a more commonly, a less known one, case 401. We'll just say, oops, Got to make sure it's indented onto the correct line, right? So it's able to be recognized. So case 401, print, you are not authorized, authorized. And then finally, we can add as many as you want, obviously, right? It doesn't have to be just three. They just happen to both have three only. 
Um, you can add as many cases as you want to your match statement. And what's really cool is you can add a default case. So let's say that, you know, you don't potentially you don't know what this variable is going to have for its value. And so you may not have a case that matches to that variable, right? Because it can be potentially, I mean, there's a bunch of different HTTP error codes out there, right? There's not only three, there's a lot of them out there, right? So what you could do is have a default case that matches if the previous ones do not match already, okay? So just like in an if statement, there's an else branch, right? The else branch runs no matter what, as long as the first ones are all false. It's the same exact thing for this one. If these are all false, if none of these match, it'll run the, the default case. So to do the default case, you can do case underscore. That's how you signify default case in Python for your match statements. So prints will say unknown, unknown error because that just makes perfect sense in that situation. If it doesn't match to any of these, it's an unknown error that we don't recognize currently. So we'll just print out unknown error to properly handle it, okay? And yeah, so let's run this now and we should get page not found, right? Because it's 404. If we change it to something like 4,000, that's none of the cases, but it should match to this default case here and it says unknown error, perfect. So you also may be wondering what happens when you have a match statement and then none of the cases match, but you don't have a default case. In this case, something called a no op will happen, no dash op. That's directly from the Python documentation, which essentially just means that nothing will happen. So it's called a no op just because nothing will happen, which just makes perfect sense. It also kind of depends on the language you're using. So I believe in other languages. Um, I don't commonly use a switch statement in other languages, but when I do, I think you have to have all cases or a default case. And if you don't have a default case, you may get an error because if it doesn't match to anything, then that's not good, right? But in Python's case, it doesn't really care. If it doesn't match to anything, it doesn't match to anything, and you don't have to worry about that. So just be aware of uh, that logic. Um, as long as you're aware of the logic that it won't throw an error if nothing matches and you don't have a default case, then you're good to go. You can you know, write your code knowing that. So let me give you a, yet another example and also show you something cool. So let's have a variable called a test score. Test score is gonna be equal to 90 because um, I'm a genius. And so match, and we'll say test score, and then we'll say case 90. So if I got a 90 on the test, then we'll print out, you got an A. I'll add another case, case, and we'll say 80. And we'll say print, you did okay. And I'll have another case, um, we'll say 75. Print, uh, you did okay again. And then I have another case, case uh, 70, print, you did okay. And then we'll have another case, case 60. We'll say print, you did poorly. And then finally, we'll have a default case because I think that's helpful to have here. And we'll say case, oops, there we go. Case uh, print, you failed and you are going to die. Very reasonable, right? So what you may notice here is that we're repeating code, which is a no-no in programming. You don't want to repeat code when you don't have to, when there's ways built into the language to make it so that you don't have to repeat code. Um, it's a waste to have to write code over and over and over again, especially as you as your code grows, right? In this case, because it's such a simple program, we're only doing a simple output statement, a simple print statement. But realistically, in real Python programs, you're going to have you know many lines of code that do complex things, not just print statements. So in this case, we need a way to combine all of these cases into one so that we're not running the same or writing the same three pieces of code three times. So a way you can do that with Python, which is really cool, is you can do 80 for the first value and then this, this little bar symbol, and then the other values that you're going to match again, match against. So 75 and then bar 70. So this just refers to logical or, so you can essentially think of these as or. So 80 or 75 or 70, which logically makes perfect sense when you're reading it. So instead of having three different cases of 80, 75, and 70, you're having one single case, and this piece of code here will run if any of these values match to the value within the variable of test score. It's very similar to how you use or within a logical expression, except that you're not typing or, using the bar. That's just how it, they want you to do it within Python, okay? Okay, guys, that's actually it for match statements. Thank you for watching this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was very informative, and now you can use match statements within your Python programs. Keep in mind you need Python 3.10 or above to be able to use this feature. Just make sure you have that, and you can see it down here. This is where you can see the version you're actually using currently. And within PyCharm, you can have different versions, but you can switch between the two if you have multiple.
In the next episode, we're going to learn about something even more awesome, which is something called for loops, which is a way of repeating code. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, if you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.